is the sisters of my mother of the church, is experiencing a great joy on its great Lord day in Jubilee. For Francis, who is present here in a certain manner in my person as his representative, is also with you in his joy. In his name, I give you all his blessings, his greetings, and the sincere wishes to all of you, the Jubilarians, the many graces of God, strength, health, and perseverance in following Jesus. In particular, I greet the shepherd of his diocese, most reverend Emmanuel Ecofitiano, Bishop of Pope, and other Lord's bishops and brothers priests, Reverend Sister Dr. Lucy Santo, Superior General, and all Sister Jubilarians, and all brothers and sisters who unfortunately put the nature in this beautiful chapel, but we communicate, we see each other. So we are celebrating today how in this 50 years was realized the inspiration which the late Bishop Anthony Keynes is a man received from the Holy Spirit. This man of God and true shepherd of Christ saw the need for the establishment of an indigenous religious institute in the then Keta diocese of the Volta region. Bishop Penning's intention for the founding of the Institute was to call, to provide opportunity for the young girls who desire to give their lives completely to God. The other is the formation of an indigenous religious institute who will take over the work of education healthcare and pastoral apostolate in the church. Religious life is a special vocation and privilege to follow Christ on the path of the evangelical councils, chastity, obedience, and poverty. Each congregation has its own particular charm that is a gift and task which it is called to carry out in the community of the church. As you know, the courage that a founder of a religious congregation receives is strategically reflected in the constitutions of that congregation. In short, to be faithful to the Christ means to implement in concrete religious life the constitution of the congregation. This wonderful day of Thanksgiving of these 50 years of existence of the Institute is also an opportunity to look into your hearts and the way of the following of Christ, not only as a community of the Institute of the Sisters of Mary Mother of the Church, but also as individual sister, each of you should ask yourself what my following of Christ looks like. It is Truly, through divine providence, that today's gospel that is the celebration of your jubilee. In Jesus, tell us what it means to follow Him. 
at the beginning of his gospel of Jesus, he conducted a kind of survey about himself. First, he asked the disciples, what the mutinies thought who he was. The last conveyed the opinions they heard in the day. It was easier for them to talk about the assessment of others they had overseen. They did not require translation. They did not oblige them to say anything. <laughs> Jesus asked the disciples whom he thinks that they prefer directly should know and say who they thought he was. Peter, who in many cases the first to speak, now confesses on behalf of Paul. You are the Messiah. Here it should be noted that the person of the Messiah was understood as a liberator, a liberator from the occupation of the Roman rule, and that he was to restore the blood freedom. His victory was to be definitely beyond that. Jesus, however, presents the true picture of Messiah and his cast. He points to the cross, the suffering of the Messiah and his death. Such an image and role of the Messiah for the disciples was unacceptable. And this writer exalts Jesus not to think so. By no means can any of these things touch the Messiah. Peter presents typical human thinking. Jesus, Jesus scolded Peter, get out of my sight, Satan. It puts off the way he thinks about the Messiah. Jesus then indicates the, to them that it will not be death, that will be the end of the Messiah's action, but his resurrection. This is the final victory over the city. He, Jesus Christ, is the Lord of the whole world. This is how Jesus presents God's thinking about the role of the Messiah in relation to the world and to all mankind. It seems today when we look at the world and the behavior of God, as Christians of the 21st century, we see Jesus as the Messiah in the same way that those people waiting for his son more than 2,000 years ago saw him as his disciple led by Peter imagining him. Today, People do not want Jesus, the Messiah, to be seen united with the cross, the place where our redemption took place. The suffering and passion of the Messiah are becoming super good for Christians today. It becomes many plans contributing nothing to everyone. Is this true Christianity? Is Jesus understood and received in this way as the true Lord of life? It is worth to go to life with Jesus, with such a Jesus. We need to break with such human thinking about Jesus the Messiah. To take Jesus seriously today are offered before us many situations, opportunities to experience that Jesus is the Messiah, but only with the cross on which he definitively should be.
His love for you and me, for every human being. Today, for a bold public confession of Jesus, many are crucified and ridiculed. For many are rejected because they do not fit into the laws lives lifestyle. That is why in this world your witness in following Jesus is so important. People need examples to show them how to carry their own cross. During his 50 years as instituted sisters, you have done much. But Jesus expects even more from you. And for this, he will not skimp on your grace even more. He will be with you and will accompany you always. As it is said in English, you can do it. In his following of Jesus, for the following of Jubilee, May you be guided by the words of Pope Francis, which he spoke on the occasion of the day of consecrated life on February 2nd, 2018. Consecrated life is born and reborn of an encounter with Jesus as he is, poor, chaste, and obedient. We journey along a double track on the one hand, God's loving initiative from which everything starts and to which we must always refer. On the other, our own response, which is truly loving when it has no ifs or buts, when it imitates Jesus in his poverty, chastity, and obedience. Whereas the life of his world attempts to take all of us, the consecrated life turns from letting riches to Angras, the one who endures forever. The life of his world forces selfish pleasures and desires. The consecrated life frees our affection of every possession in order fully to love God and other people. What we like is to do whatever we want. Consecrated life choose humble obedience as the greater freedom. And while walking life so leaves our hands and heart empty. Life in Jesus fills us with peace to the very end, as in the gospel where Simon and Anna come happily to the sunset of their lives with the Lord in their arms and joy in their tailored hearts in. Amen.